Greetings all, it's Blue Knight, and welcome to my 10 year Let's Player Anniversary. <laughs> 10 years, that's... that's a lot of time that could pass. I really didn't think I'd be sticking with a hobby for this long. Well, apart from video games, but I'm seriously surprised myself that I am still doing this all these years later. <laughs> I know I just released the 200 subscriber celebration a while back, but this is still a pretty big deal. A very big milestone that should be acknowledged in some way. I would just feel foolish not doing anything to celebrate it. Technically, the age for the channel itself is about 11. But I started making Let's Play videos back in 2011. I just figured I'd try my hand at it to see how it goes. I thought it would just be like some small face I would get over really fast at first. But here we are! Still making content all these years later, and I'm still having fun. <laughs> Again, really surreal to think about. And the way I want to celebrate this milestone is to look at all the playlists of the LPs that I have done so far and talk about them individually. Just give a little more context as to what I was doing with each of those series. And I guess how I felt or where I was at the time when I did make each of these playlists. So like all things that have lasted for this long, it's best to start at the beginning. So we're gonna do just that. How I'm going to start out is going to be a little unorthodox, let's say. The first two LPs I did on the channel were the first two Sly Cooper games. I'm lumping these together to start things off because these were some of my earliest work, so it's not going to age very well. But they were kind of at the same place on how I was making them, at least at first. With Sly Cooper and the Thebes Raccoonus, I wasn't taking that seriously after all, just starting out, so I didn't know how long I was gonna even be doing LPs. But it was a game that was short enough that I felt confident enough to carry through a whole Let's Play since I knew it pretty well, or at least well enough, that I could go from start to end talking about it all the while. And it wasn't too long that it would both overstay its welcome and for me, from a creative standpoint, to not be feeling overwhelmed or intimidated because I knew it was the biggest game in the world to cover. So I felt comfortable enough in starting my whole LP journey with this game. My opinions about it still stands. It's not my favorite game in the series. That still belongs to Sly 3. And I haven't really gone back to play it since. But I've grown to like it a little bit more over the years. As just as a basic going from point A to point B kind of platformer. It does its job really well. And it does carry the tone across what it's trying to do. So I do have a little bit more respect for it in that regard. As it was my first LP, it's not the best way to present it creatively speaking. But we all gotta start somewhere. Slide 2 was also the same way at first. I get a little bit of experience, but I was still far away from where I wanted to be. And this... This was quite the anomaly, I guess. What I thought would take me a few months, at best, ended up taking me three years to finish because, for starters, I was still pretty lazy back then. Well, way more lazy than I am right now. I wasn't really taking it seriously or the LP craft seriously at that time. Then again, I was starting out, like I said before. So I didn't really focus on it too much to the point where I neglected it 
and I just released uh, maybe one or two episodes a year at best just to make some headway on it or when I had free time to kill. And it wasn't until I got really sick in the final year of his incompleted existence, so to speak, 2015, that I decided I wanted to take Let's Plays more seriously. And to start with that was to finish Band of Thieves. Even if I never wanted to do another Let's Play after this, I would at least have this completed so I would first and foremost stop thinking about how much I've neglected it to begin with. <laughs> and it was kind of a blessing in disguise I did take that long to finish slide 2 because that's when I really started to experiment with editing uh, and how I wanted to uh, polish my videos from that point on about the halfway-ish mark uh, on how long that game took. It was still really rough in the beginning since I was experimenting to actually put some effort into making my contents a little more quality clean, I guess. <laughs> and it still did come out rough at the end, but at least I knew how to edit now <laughs> from a rough standpoint. Next up was Star Fox 64. After playing through the first two slide games, I learned very quickly that it wasn't really healthy, at least for me, to do one series back to back. So this was a start of what I want to take a break from the Sly Cooper lineup to focus on other things and get more experience for when I go back to Sly 3, I would be a lot more confident in how I wanted to make that. And I figured I'd start with my favorite game of all time. At least I didn't use Star Fox 64 as the very first LP because that is a mistake a lot of people who start out do attempt. Granted, it was still pretty rough, but this was the very first project I wanted to do in do some heavy background research, all the while continuing to polish how my editing style would turn out. And I did a little lot about the lore behind Star Fox 64. It was really interesting stuff that I did find. Since I want to use Let's Play as a way to learn more about the games that I already know pretty well by heart, this made the researching I did so worth it. And this is one game I wouldn't mind doing like a redux of in the future for Let's Play, since I've grown so much since that time. I feel like I could do a lot more justice with it now because it is my favorite game, and I feel like I should give it the best effort that I could do now. And that kind of goes the same for the for the first two slide games as well. I wouldn't mind actually doing a redux of those LPs in the future if the time would allow it. All of these are just ideas right now. I'm not really fully committed to them, but it's something I really want to jump forward with, then uh, I think I will do that for these three specific uh, series of videos. After Star Fox 64 was The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, my first Zelda game that I ever beat. And this was really intimidating starting out. I was really, really nervous in covering this game. Because even though I did know it very well, it was the longest game I've covered at that point in the channel's history. And I wasn't used to making a Let's Play out of a, a game with the game length that this one had. But I knew I had to do it eventually if I wanted to get better at commentating at the very least. And, to my surprise, at that point in time, I was able to pull that off. And I was really proud of doing that. If, again, it's probably not the best uh, way to show it off in like a walkthrough format. But I'm still really proud of how 
I was able to get through it, and I did feel a lot more confident after finishing that lineup. And at that point, I felt like I could pretty much tackle an even more wider assortment of games that I wanted to go through with from that point on. Next up would be Ratchet & Clank. This was still part of a genre that I am very comfortable in. Even today, I'm still very well versed in like platforming games. And Ratchet & Clank was near the top of that uh, heap when it comes to playing through the platforming genre. And this was the first LP that as a creator, I did feel very satisfied with how it turned out. Even today, I look back on it, and I still think that it does measure up to my personal standards very well. All the other games I covered before, I was just happy to get through them. But this was the very first LP that I did that I could see to myself, yeah, this did turn out pretty well. It probably helped out a lot due to me making my own uh, weapons uh, catalog, uh, I suppose, uh, for every level in the game, uh, taking what I thought was the best ones uh, suited for each planet uh, and using only that group uh, of artillery to go through the levels. And that idea helped out streamline the gameplay a lot more, something I don't really do when I play Ratchet & Clank games casually. But I had a feeling this would work if I was able to implement that aspect correctly. And it did. That's something I would not mind doing it if I ever go back to the series. Which chances are, it's a major possibility that will happen. <laughs> I mean, this was the first game in a long, long franchise that's still going today that I did cover back then. And it's one of my favorites in the platforming genre, so... <laughs> It would be a crime not to go back to this series. It will happen at some points. Not sure when, but I'm pretty sure it's all but guaranteed. Sticking with platforming games that still take place in space, we go to Super Luigi Galaxy. The reason why I picked Luigi specifically for this is that I personally have a more comfortable time playing as Luigi than I do with Mario in this game. But regardless, Galaxy 1 is still a very wonderful game that holds up so much, even way after its release date. I mean, it ended up getting poured to Switch as part of that 3D All-Stars collection that ended up being limited time, which was a really stupid idea that Nintendo did, but that's a whole different topic altogether. And if I felt satisfied with Ratchet & Clank, then I felt very proud with how Luigi Galaxy turned out. Probably way more prouder than I did with the last Let's Play. And that might be mainly due to the fact that when I did start up uh, Luigi Galaxy, I was learning how to do the metadata for tagging videos, like the title, description, and with the video tags. Just whatever I could do to get more eyes onto my content. I even learned of a few extraneous sites that I could post YouTube videos on to attempt getting more attention back on the channel. And that has worked to some small degree. As a matter of fact, every day that I did post an episode of Luigi Galaxy, I was able to get a new subscriber on a regular basis, and that got me really close to 100 subs, as a matter of fact. Like, I was only at 97 by the time I was done Luigi Galaxy. I didn't think things would progress that fast when it came to trying to grow my audience. But thanks to Luigi Galaxy, that was achieved very rapidly by my standards. And so on the precipice of reaching 100 subs, I felt confident going into my next project, which turned out to be a much bigger endeavor than Skyward Sword ever 
turned out to be. I knew it was gonna be large when I started out with doing that, but who, buddy? <laughs> I think even I underestimated how much work would actually go into that, even though I knew it was gonna be worth it. And of course, I'm talking about Persona 3 F E S. <laughs> this is one of those games that I haven't made any attempt on the bonus videos of it yet. As a matter of fact, I haven't even gone back to this game after I LP'd it. I just honestly don't have the time for it right now. And whenever I did have a chance to try to make some headway on that, I just was in the mood. I will get to those videos that I want to do as bonus material for this LP someday, but that's gonna come in time. Persona 3 FPS from the main playthrough of it was very, very large. This still stands as my longest running Let's Play ever. It went on for exactly one year, which started and ended on my birthday, something I didn't even try to attempt to do. It just happened that way. At least when I started out, I did want to post on my birthday because I just felt like it would be the best way to do it, especially for my second favorite game of all time. But little did I know, despite all the delays that would go on in between videos for this LP, I was still able to finish it off on my birthday one year later. That still blows my mind. I know it's not going to be a game for everybody, especially with how much that Persona 4 and even Persona 5 has streamlined the gameplay of, it, of the entire Persona series since, but it's still one that I cherish very closely to me. It was my gateway to RPGs after trying so long into getting into that genre, and I didn't care how long it would take to do this LP to be frank, because I was enjoying every step of the way just showing my love for this game, a game that means a lot more to me than probably it does to most people. And if I ever wanted to cover a series that would last 170 parts, probably over, ever again, at least I know I can do it now. It's something that I haven't really thought of doing after this. I just stuck to more smaller games to an extent since then. But I would like to do a game as big as this sometime down the line. I have had some ideas on games that could last over 100 episodes like this one did. But something that I just don't really want to do right now. It's going to happen, but just not anytime soon. <laughs> Overall, though, I'm still glad I went through with doing Persona 3 FPS. And if I did ever get the chance to do this LP again, in a heartbeat, I would, because Persona 3 FPS matters to me that much. Going from one of my favorite games to another, this now jumps into Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves, something that was a long time coming for this channel. And I came a long way from my roots doing the first two Sly games many years before. <laughs> and I knew, I also knew, that when I jumped into making the Honor Among Thieves LP, that I was gonna do this to the absolute best of my skill because I gained so much experience since starting out with Let's Plays that I had a really good feeling that I was going to do this game so much justice. And whether I did or did not do that, that's up to your interpretation, your opinion. But from a creator standpoint, I couldn't be any happier with how this turned out. It worked out practically to the vision that I had for this LP, really. I can't think of any other way to describe my time with making Sly 3. <laughs> it was just so much fun uh, to do this game uh, with how much I grew uh, from my early days uh, and I knew uh, that uh, 
in order to make Honor Among Thieves somewhat watchable and uh, from a creator's view passable enough in terms of like quality content to make that I had to give it my absolute best especially for my favorite game in the Sly Cooper series. I just really can't say anything else about this LP other than it went the way that I wanted to and I'm very happy with that. Sometimes that's all you could ask for. Next up would be a game that I never really thought I would cover as someone who loves Star Fox 64 to death. <laughs> that is the follow-up to that game, Star Fox Adventures, a game that surprised me a lot when it came to reception on how how much feedback this LP got. I remember getting a lot of comments from the extraneous sites that I would post my YouTube videos on that people said that they remember this game from their childhood and they actually liked playing this from that point in time in their lives. That really surprised me a lot about how big of a fan base this game really has despite in the overall perspective about the Star Fox series that this one is the black sheep of that entire franchise. It doesn't play like a Star Fox game. It probably doesn't look like a Star Fox game. Yet there is some joy to it. I firmly believe that. After playing through it on my own time, I saw myself doing a let's play on this game and I jumped on that chance almost immediately. <laughs> I severely underestimated how much I would actually like this game and despite this being one of the shorter LPs I would do in my quote unquote career as an LPer, I had as much fun going through this game again as I did back when uh, I played it on my own time. And it really did help out that I could make the videos for this LP relatively small because this game in general does have a lot of content to offer for players. But that really helped out as a Let's Player to make videos on since I knew I didn't have to go that long in recording episodes for this that I can just pump these out as rapidly and as comfortably for my own pace as I wanted as I wanted to. So this was actually one of the easier LPs to make mainly in the recording aspect and editing it wasn't that much of a challenge either. It's just that, other than that stupid test of fear, and I guess the test of uh, knowledge I think it's called, the one where you have to put all the artifacts in the respective places as part of the final Crusoe test. Other than those two points of the game, and I guess that mashing mini game where you fight one of the, I think it was the Lightfoot tribe in one of the Lightfoot trials, in one of the Lightfoot tribe's trials in that game, at least for other people. I don't really find that specific mini game that hard. Apart from those few points, Star Fox Adventures is a game I would recommend to other people. Just don't take it very seriously as a Star Fox game because it's not that. If you can look at it from any other point other than that, then you might actually find something enjoyable with this game. I certainly did. Moving on from Star Fox Adventures, I went from one rare game to another. That was the intention that I wanted to do because I just thought it was hilarious I would go from something as small as Star Fox Adventures to something as big in context like Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> if you know about this game, you know its reputation as like being the game that has the all-time Guinness World Record for having the most collectibles in a video game, but even with that piece of knowledge in mind, that did not deter me from wanting to do this game as an LP, because <laughs> I like it too much. I still do like it, even though I haven't touched it in a while. 
it was one of the games that helped me forge my drive to become a completionist on video games. <laughs> and despite that there were a few major hiccups within the game itself, I still like it. However, it's very surreal that I went from uploading every other day at this point in time for uploading parts to now switching in mid-series to upload on a daily basis because it was during this LP that I finally was able to switch out of my crappy laptop that I had been using for the longest time to an actual desktop computer which has served me well to this day. <laughs> it was merely that one big change that could help me increase by uploading pace for making videos from that point on. And what felt like a game that would take me a while to get through, something just flew by in a blink of an eye. <laughs> I can't even remember how the latter half of the series went because I was able to upload daily after a certain point and when I did this LP was over before I knew it but I'm glad that I was able to make that change albeit it had to be very abruptly it's still something that I am very fortunate enough to be able to do now and truth be told I haven't touched this game in like maybe a couple years. <laughs> I ended up completing it three times in the span of two years. One was for playing on my own time, another was for planning it out, and the third time was for was for YouTube. <laughs> so even though I do like this game still, despite its faults, I kinda got sick of it after a bit. I haven't touched it since. I'm pretty sure I won't go back to it. It's one of those games that I just find enough comfort to go back to whenever I feel like it. Whether it's out of nostalgia or just a hankering to play something from my past that I'm comfortable with and I've experienced it. It's just one of those games that I like going back to because I still have that familiarity with it. <laughs> At this point, I was still covering Nintendo games, something that I wanted to make as a big presence on my channel since the first half of my LP career. I don't know why, I felt like I was doing a lot of PlayStation stuff, even though that's not really the case. I mean, out of the first six LPs I did, half of those are Nintendo-based titles. But I'm not sure why, even back in the day when I was starting out and getting experience to grow my skill in this craft, I just felt like I wasn't doing enough Nintendo content. And it wasn't until Paper Mario that I feel like I was making myself known that I was showing people that I do like Nintendo games almost as much, if not more, than PlayStation games. That's just my personal headspace. I'm sure it didn't bother any of you if you watched this LP or any of my previous work, but that's just what I felt. And whenever I think about Paper Mario, I just have flashes of remembering all the really strange moments that came out of this out of this playthrough for me. As someone who doesn't have that much experience in Paper Mario, I've only played it for a few years, as opposed to people who grew up in this game. Still though, it does baffle my mind on how many of the weird things that happened in this game did happen, especially when it came to Merle. I don't know why she was being such a a guardian angel to me when uh, I introduced her mechanic into the playthrough. She just always seemed to look out for me whenever I needed most most of the time. It was so surreal to see her actually 
work with me in a lot of ways that she did. She became the MVP of that entire series, bar none. And that is just one aspect I will always cherish playing this game as a Let's Play. It still makes me very happy to this day that how much effort she put into helping me out throughout the journey of that game <laughs> that did occur. <laughs> it's probably something I'll never get over when I play this game on my own time in the future. <laughs> but it's just something I learned to cherish a lot. And uh, because of that, I just learned to cherish Merle a lot. <laughs> and finally, we cut the most recent Let's Play that was finished just a while back, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, the HD port for the Wii U to be specific. I'm not sure there's anything else I can say about this game that I haven't said for the previous Let's Plays. It came out the way that I wanted to, more or less, and I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. I mainly used this game as like one big continuous field test to test out the capture card that I switched to, the Elgato HD60S. And despite a few hiccups in like the first 20 parts of the LP with how I had to learn how to record, I was able to fix that little bug very quickly and things just went even smoother from there. <laughs> But I'm really glad with how much feedback this game got because it felt like there were a lot more comments on this LP than there was in any of my previous work so far. That could be just me because this game is still fresh in my mind. This whole LP is still fresh in my mind. So it kind of represents where I am now as a Let's Player. All in all, I really can't say anything specific about this LP that it's worth pointing out. It just came out the way I wanted to, for the most part, and I'm happy with it. And I'm happy to see how much people do like this game. I kind of figured I had a big fan base and all, but to see how much people do resonate with this game in particular, it does make me happy. Kind of makes me feel that I'm not alone when it comes to liking this game. And that's something I will cherish a lot. And that's basically where we stand right now. That last LP wasn't too long ago and that kind of made something unexpected happen. Usually when I start an LP, I get this weird feeling of actually being productive on uh, making content again. And then when I stop making videos, I get another weird feeling that it feels strange to not be productive anymore. However, that latter feeling, it hasn't happened yet. It's been like nine days since Twilight Princess finished and I still feel normal, which is really strange. <laughs> A first for me, really. Granted, at the time of this recording, I have not done those streams yet. Mainly because some things have been happening over on Twitch lately that uh, has been kind of unfortunate to hear. But rest assured, those streams aren't going to happen. It's just that what's been going on over on Twitch lately has kind of made me step back a little bit on when to actually start on those streams. And I guess all I can say is thank you. I know I said this a lot in the 200 subscriber celebration video and I don't want to repeat a lot of what I said over there. So I'm just going to say Thanks for watching when you've been here since day one or you've come along uh, along the way over these last 10 years. I know I don't have the biggest audience in the world, but I am very appreciative that I do have an audience at all that likes to watch my stuff. So I hope you stick around for the next 10 years because I'm going to be honest, even though I have been doing LPs for this long, I'm far from finished. I feel like I haven't even come anywhere near close to all the ideas that I have in mind to do as a content creator. I'm far done for this, so 
I'm gonna be around for a long time, only this decade is gonna be a lot more active than the last. There ain't gonna be any time for me to be lazy now. <laughs> I am fully committed to this hobby. I am happy that I'm still doing it. And I'm gonna be even more happier that I'm gonna keep doing it for many more years to come. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed watching this. This was all mostly off the cuff. I had like an intro prepared, but then after that, it was all scripted. <laughs> Now, if you excuse me, I'm recording this in the middle of an oncoming potential thunderstorm that could be approaching my area any moment now. And I'm going to celebrate by having some cake because I did mention earlier that I finished one of my LPs on my birthday. And I've actually recorded this on my birthday too. <laughs> it's funny how life turns out that way sometimes, but that's just how it goes. If you did last this long, thank you for watching. I hope I see you again very soon, wherever it may be. Until that time comes, farewell for now, and thanks for watching.